If you were to ask a newer player what a top tier weapon in Splatoon 3 would be called, chances are they wouldn't say the Squeezer. And that's where they're wrong, because the Squeezer is viewed as one of the best weapons in the game right now, due to its insane strengths and dominion over most of the weapons in the game. However, Squeezer rarely sees use outside of very dedicated and professional players. And this can be really confusing to some, considering this weapon is so good. I think we can trace this weird enigma back to its design and balancing, which in my opinion, is some of the worst in the entire game. And with the foil squeezer's rise to fame in the most recent season, now is as good of a time as ever to discuss why squeezer is so strange in this game. But with all of that out of the way, let's get into it. Let's start by breaking down this weapon's strengths, which Squeezer has a lot of. So let's just go over the main ones. Squeezer has two separate firing modes, a burst fire mode and a painting mode. This alone gives it versatility that only weapons like the Ballpoint and S-Blast have, as it's able to comfortably switch between playstyles at ease. The burst fire mode does 38 damage on contact, making it a consistent 3-shot kill at a range of roughly 13 units, not accounting for any extra falloff damage range. For reference, the Splattershot Pro has roughly 11 units of effective range, making Squeezer one of the longest ranged shooters in the entire game, with a kill time only slightly slower than the Splattershot Pro. This mode also has no RNG on the ground or in the air, making it one of the most consistent methods of fire in the entire game. Combining this with the fact that shots reach their target in just over a quarter of a second, and you can shoot over 7 of these shots per second with adequate mashing, this weapon is deadly for anyone in its range. This firing mode does have a lack of paint, but luckily for Squeezer, there is a separate mode for painting when you hold ZR. While this isn't the best paint in the world, it's able to get it special enough and take map control enough to be rendered useful. This paint is still better than the majority of non-shooters in the game, so I'd argue it's more than good enough considering the rest of the weapon's strengths. This firing method has a fairly good strafe speed and stacks very well with run speed. And all of of that is without discussing this weapon's two kits, which are both great at worst and insanely broken at best. Overall, both kits have their uses, and are generally strong for what the weapon wants to do. The original kit is more defensive and slow, whereas the foil kit is more aggressive and versatile. So with all of these strengths weighed up, and even more that I haven't even discussed, like its ability to counter most weapons in the game, why hasn't Squeezer seen much use? I think to answer this question, we need to look at how difficult the weapon is. Just to put this into perspective, I had to ask some of my friends for their squeezer footage, because I am physically incapable of playing it well. While I don't have arthritis or carpal tunnel myself, I know people who do. Those people find it impossible to play this weapon well, depending on the severity of their condition. Considering to perform well, you need to be able to mash fast enough to kill quickly. And even in the best case scenario where you're perfectly fine with mashing, keep in mind that you need to aim at a range with pinpoint accuracy in order to get maximum value out of the weapon. I could go on and on and on, but in short, this weapon is the most precise in the entire game and it's not even close. People would consider Squeezer a lot more if it was the only weapon of its kind, but there are much easier options for what Squeezer does well. For example, if you want to play a long range shooter with a wall, the 96 Deco is right there. If you want to spam Zookas, the vanilla Splattershot has a bomb and is 20 points for special cheaper. Not to mention, it's an incredibly easy weapon to use. My point is that while Squeezer could theoretically be the best weapon in the game, to quite a lot of the player base, there's way more feasible and less physically painful weapons to use. Top Squeezer players say they took months to learn the weapon, which is absolutely insane, since the urge to play an easier weapon must have been insanely powerful. After weighing all of this up, we can conclude that this weapon has horrible balancing, winning against almost any other weapon in the game if played properly. We can also conclude that realistically, this is physically impossible for some people to play, a trait that no other weapon in the entire game has, which is also terrible. Only a horribly designed weapon could accomplish both of these things. And I haven't even discussed the worst part about Squeezer, and that's fighting the weapon. Ignoring everything that I've discussed about the main weapon, which took me two minutes to cover by the way, I want to focus on one specific aspect of it, being the kits. The original kit has Splash Wall and Trizuka, which is already a dumb combination in of itself. Wall makes this weapon insanely difficult to kill, and without a bomb to detonate on it, it can be almost impossible considering Squeeze's range. And trying to snipe the weapon is no good too, because keep in mind it also has Trizuka, a special that can rival even E-Liters in terms of range and power. I can't think of many weapons that 
would actually win against Squeezer considering this. And the worst part is that this kit is the lesser of two evils. Auto Bomb on Squeezer is purely healthy, I really have no issues there. The problem is in its special, the new splatter color screen. Of course, there's the issue that throwing the screen can restrict the vision of your teammates, making it a pain to deal with in solo queue even when you're on the Squeezer's team. From a spectator's perspective, in tournaments it also just stops viewers from seeing anything, leading games to become even more hard to follow and watch. But by far the biggest issue that the special has is the health risks that it brings. Okay, since this video was scripted, this aspect of the special has been partly fixed, being the visual effect that this screen has. Many people who had issues with light sensitivity stopped getting migraines, headaches, panic attacks, and general discomfort from the special, which is amazing, and I'm so glad that Nintendo addressed this issue. However, there are also reports of auditory issues, where the sizzling sound that the screen plays is disruptive to players' ears. It's for this reason that the majority of the competitive scene has decided to continue banning the special, and I am all for this idea. From my experience as a content creator, I now need to prevent screen's effects from occurring, as when I'm streaming, I don't want one of my viewers to collapse or have a seizure. Screen just makes it difficult to stream as well. I have to actively avoid it now. If I'm playing alone, I wouldn't care, but here it's, it's, it's different. And considering the special's sheer size, that's a hurdle that really isn't easy to jump across. For that reason, I feel immense sympathy for anyone affected by this. And it's a shame too, because Foil Squeezer is a fun kit, but action needs to be taken to protect those in our community. This weapon is the king of inaccessibility. It can physically hurt those playing as and against it, which is something that simply should not exist in a video game designed around having fun. I think almost every aspect of this weapon needs a serious rework. But there's my thoughts. What do you guys think of Squeezer? Let me know in the comments and remember to not harass or belittle any Squeezer players. My opinion is not fact. But aside from all of that, make sure to take care and have a good day.